in five, four, three, two. Are you nostalgic, a parent, or perhaps a child at heart? When it comes to children's media, from books to TV shows, and even movies, there's often more than meets the eye. Is it well written? Does it still hold up today? What works and what doesn't? Or maybe you wonder what went on behind the scenes of that work. Together, a trio of adults, who are also kids at heart, will critique and comment on one piece of children's media each episode. Hello, this is Eric. Hi, I'm PJ. And I'm Rico. You're listening to Beyond the Lens, a family-friendly podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of Beyond the Lens. I'm PJ, joined once again by Rico, and this may be a Beyond the Lens first, um, but Rico and I both had the show for our picks, um, if that gives you an idea of how popular and amazing this show is, um, but I'm going to be hosting this episode. Um, but even though I am hosting, um, air quote, it's kind of like a, a pick from both of us. So... Um, The show I am, of course, talking about was a very popular Nickelodeon show called iCarly. And I don't even think I need to ask this question to Rico, but I'm required to anyways. How familiar are you with iCarly, Rico? Very familiar. (laughs) Yes, iCarly was super popular and it still is. I think most people know what this show is all about. But in case you're living under a rock, um, iCarly was created by Dan Schneider who is not just the co-president of Schneider's Bakery, but he's also the subject of a lot of recent controversies, which I'm sure we'll elaborate on later. His company, Schneider's Bakery, created many hit Nickelodeon shows prior to iCarly, including Zoe 101, All That, The Amanda Show, and Drake and Josh, which was the show that ended before iCarly. Miranda Cosgrove played Drake and Josh's little sister, Megan, which may be a part of the reason why she was casted for the role of Carly, um, the main character on iCarly. Jeanette McCurdy played Sam Puckett, Carly's best friend. Nathan Cress played Carly's other best friend, Freddie. Jerry Trainer, who was also on Drake and Josh, playing a character named Crazy Steve, played Carly's older brother, Spencer, with who Carly lived with. As Carly's dad is in the Air Force and is living away from them, Spencer is Carly's legal guardian. To this day, there is no mention as to where Carly's mom is. Um, But later on in the series, the trio's other friend, Gibby, joined the main cast, and he's played by Noah Monk. Um, So there was a lot of uh, main characters, and Sam and Carly kind of came up with the idea for iCarly with Freddie being the camera person. My favorite character is probably Sam, since growing up, I was a bit of a tomboy myself, and she has that I-don't-really-care attitude that's just really relatable. Um, Rico, do you have a favorite character? You know, it's sort of hard to pick. Uh, I mean, maybe I would go with uh, Spencer because he's sort of the child at heart and also creative with his art. So that's a little bit like me, I suppose. Yeah, that's very true. Spencer always, now the running gag, one of the running gags of the show was Spencer always made these really cool art sculptures and somehow they would catch on fire, which was the most (laughs) hysterical thing to me as a child. Um, That was one of my favorite parts of the show. And the other cool thing to me about iCarly is that it takes place in Seattle, which for those of you that don't know, I'm actually from Seattle. I was born and raised here. So I thought that was a really cool part of the show. But folks, I'm sad to report that it actually wasn't filmed here in Seattle. In fact, there is no such building called Bushwell Plaza here where Carly and Spencer lived. The series was primarily filmed in, of course, Hollywood with the actual building being a CGI kind of edited version of the Eastern Columbia building in Los Angeles. Um, But even though it wasn't filmed in Seattle, it was really cool that they mentioned like a handful of actual places here in Washington state, including Yakima and the Mount Baker National Forest. Those are actual places here. And I also really enjoyed seeing little hints of Seattle here and there. For example, there was a coffee shop in the show that was a parody of Starbucks called Skybucks and another coffee shop called JetBlue, which is a parody of the airline JetBlue, but is also a reference to Seattle being like the coffee and airplane capital of America, since Seattle is also dubbed Jet City. Um, And the plot of the show is Carly and Sam, as I mentioned earlier, 
become famous from doing their web show named iCarly with the help of Freddy as their cameraman. On the show, they do a bunch of segments, some of them reoccurring, and it basically exists to make people laugh or spotlight other people that have a cool or unique talent. Now, a lot of people don't know this next fact, but the original idea for iCarly was to have Carly get famous from a TV show, not a web show. And this show would have been called Starstruck. The idea for a web show was thought of at the very last possible minute when Schneider was talking with his wife and his friend and thought that Carly having her own show and doing whatever she wanted was a much better idea. And when Schneider brought this up to Miranda Cosgrove, she was initially against it, thinking that it wouldn't make sense. But as YouTube and other social media sites were gaining popularity at the time, I think that's why the show became so successful overall. It was definitely targeted towards Gen Z kids who were already growing up at the internet and computer games. So it makes total sense to me that at least iCarly got so popular with our generation. And it got so popular, in fact, that iCarly ran for six seasons with nearly 100 episodes. There were several special episodes, including a crossover with another show that Dan Schneider created after iCarly, Victorious, which was an extremely popular show. Um, pretty much most of Dan Schneider's shows became mega popular. Um, and the crossover episode with Victorious was appropriately titled I Party with Victorious, as all iCarly episodes started with that I, like an iCarly. Now, that particular episode, I don't really remember most of I remember it being like really long because it was like an hour, hour and a half. It was almost like a movie. Um, I thought that episode was okay overall. I don't really I can't think of my favorite episode off the top of my head. But Rico, do you have a favorite episode of iCarly? Yeah, there's actually uh several. Usually most of them are like in the earlier seasons. Like the first one that comes to mind is I Promise Not to Tell which is the one where Sam gets to the school computer system and changes Carly's grade. Do you remember that one? Um, I feel like I've seen it. I think I've seen the majority of iCarly episodes, um, but some of them are like a blur to me, so I can't really... I, that sounds very familiar, though. Yeah, the episode had a teacher who was very strict give Carly uh, a B on a paper that only because it was printed on three-hole paper which he hated. Oh, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> now I remember it. Nice. Um, yeah, for me, I really, now that I think of it, I really enjoyed the episode where Carly got a new bedroom after Spencer built her that teddy bear lamp that mm -hmm. also caught on fire and burnt down her old room. Yeah. I thought her new room was so amazing. To this day, I still want that room, actually. I hope mm -hmm. my future house has the same features that her <laughs> new bedroom did. I just loved it so much and I always envied her, especially the new teddy bear lamp that just like dangled from her ceiling and the water boat like coffee table. It was just so awesome. Um, but yeah, I mean, all the episodes in general were just really entertaining. And um, I like how each season wasn't really the same. Like they'd bring in new characters. You know, we were introduced to Gibby later on. And then um, since Carly and her friends went to the groovy smoothie so often, Tebow became a part of the cast. And it was just really entertaining to see like the like we always had the main cast, but we also had the changing of the side characters, which was really cool. Um, but in addition to the main show, iCarly also had their own website, which at the time was pretty cool for a TV show because that wasn't really a thing. Um, unfortunately, the website doesn't exist anymore. It now leads you to the iCarly section of the Nickelodeon website. But with the old iCarly site, you could actually go on there and see bonus footage of many things, including behind the scenes of the show, bloopers, another short segment outside of the show called I Drive Through, in which it was usually Freddy, Sam and Spencer that go to Inside Out Burger, which is a parody of in and out Burger. But I don't think the producers really researched this very well, because sadly enough, we do not have an in and out Burger here in Washington State, not even one. And I want one here so badly, but that's a story for another day. Anyways, it would be really, uh, it would be one of those, it would be those three going to the drive through and just saying random nonsense or messing around with the person um, that's on the loudspeaker at the drive through. And it was also one of my favorite things as a kid. I would go on YouTube and also look up those episodes or look up bloopers from my Carly. 
And they genuinely made me laugh. I don't think I can name another kid's show that has made me laugh as hard as iCarly did. Um, Rico, have you ever seen any of those segments or like bonus footage? Uh, not, not back when the site was live. I noticed there was some people who uploaded some of the clips from the website on YouTube they found many years later, but... Uh, I haven't seen any of those clips in the live on the website. Yeah, the website had a lot of stuff on it. And as you mentioned, a lot of people uploaded it to YouTube as well, because I guess a lot of people never found out about the website anyway, because like it wasn't really advertised through Nickelodeon or through the show itself. I mean, when we see the opening theme song, which by the way, is sung by Drake Bell and Miranda Cosgrove, which is another cool thing, because um, obviously Drake Bell was uh, the main character of Drake and Josh. He played Drake Parker. And in the show, he was a musician. Musician. He was also a musician in real life. So I thought that was a really cool little detail. And that, the fact that they got him and Miranda to sing the opening iCarly theme song. Anyway, um, you could see in the opening credits that iCarly did have that website in the show. But it was also true in real life, which I also thought was a really cool little thing that they did. Um, but yeah, a lot of people still like didn't know that it was an actual site that you could go to. So many people decided to rip the videos from the website and put them on YouTube, which I believe you can still find today. Maybe not all of the things that they uploaded, but you can still find bloopers, behind the scenes stuff, the I drive through segment. And I think they did one other segment that I can't remember the name of, but that was hysterical as well. I would always enjoy watching those um, when I was younger. And after the show ended, fans were, of course, extremely disappointed about it. But not long after it ended, we were introduced to another crossover with Victorious and iCarly. But this time it was with Sam from iCarly and Kat, played by Ariana Grande from Victorious, with the title of the show simply being Sam and Kat. The show followed both of them as Sam left Seattle to go explore the West Coast since Carly left Seattle to go with her dad to Italy, where he was stationed at. Um, but Kat runs, or I'm sorry, Sam runs into Kat while in Los Angeles. The two end up living together and make money with their babysitting service. And the show is just about their adventures with babysitting and with the people they come across, including Kat's Nona. So I don't really, I didn't really see the show. Um, but Rico, have you seen any episodes of Sam and Kat? Uh, I've seen a few. Uh, I haven't really, like, watched it a lot while it was on like maybe watched two episodes but after that i just a little bit had it slipped my mind yeah so it um i haven't really seen the show like i said that much as it premiered when i was in high school and around that time i stopped watching nickelodeon and the other kids channels i actually only know of the show because of course one of my former nanny kids loved the show i would watch or i watched i think an episode or two with them and I don't really know what I was expecting from the show. Like, I just thought, oh, it's like it's a continuation of iCarly and Victorious, because I think when that show premiered, both shows had ended um, and I watched those episodes and it was definitely better than I expected it to be. But I obviously didn't really enjoy it as much as I did iCarly or Victorious. Yeah, like I thought it was cool that they continued the storyline for both shows, but that's really the only purpose that it served, in my opinion. I know a lot of kids loved that show and it reached the next generation of uh, kids, you know, for Gen Z, we grew up with iCarly, Generation Alpha, which is the generation after Gen Z, kind of grew up with Sam and Cat. And that brought those and it brought Generation Alpha back to iCarly, back to Victoria so they could watch those shows as well and see how Sam and Cat came to be. So I do like that part of the show, but nothing about Sam and Cat was really memorable to me. I, it, I think it was kind of entertaining, but like I said, it just it didn't really hit that same mark with me as it did with both iCarly and Victorious. And now after Sam and Cat ended, which only ran for one season, despite there being plans for a second season, which is probably why a lot of people don't really remember like the little details of that show. Um, people still kept pestering the cast and crew for years about an iCarly reboot. And it finally happened last year. The reboot is still called iCarly and it's available to watch exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. The reboot is still targeted towards Gen Z or the original viewers of iCarly, 
because the show is now more adult themed and dealing with real world problems in addition to iCarly being revived, which I think isn't really a web show anymore. It's now mostly consisted of Carly like live streaming or I don't know, just updating her blog or something from like different locations and whatnot and what she's up to. Honestly, I watched the entire first season of the reboot. I haven't quite gotten to the second season yet, but I already forgot most of the first season because um, even though the show returned with Miranda and Nathan and Jerry reprising their roles as Carly, Freddie and Spencer, respectively, the new cast members kind of threw me off a little bit. So it's taking some time to really get to know everybody. Um, And of course, those new cast members are including Carly's new roommate, Harper, played by Lacey Mosley. And Freddie's adopted stepdaughter from one of his failed marriages named uh, Millicent, played by Jaden Triplett. The show is based around uh, Carly relaunching iCarly and many guest stars from the original series return as well. But in case you haven't seen the first season of the reboot, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But I was genuinely entertained by the new season. I just don't remember it because I've only seen every episode once. Um, Like I said, and it's still taking time for me to really kind of soak everything in. But I remember it to the point where it seems like the new iCarly had more of a consistent storyline, which I really appreciated about the reboot. The original show was almost random every single episode, but the reboot, in my opinion, was more consistent with um, the overall storyline. And I think there's pros and cons to both shows. I mean, you really can't compare them that much as the new iCarly isn't a remake, because yes, there is a difference between a remake and a reboot, um, which often like the remakes happen a lot with TV shows where it's like the same characters, the same plot, they just are like remaking the content and like continuing the story. They're continuing the story here, but like there's a lot of changes to it. Um, And this doesn't happen very often with a lot of movies and TV shows. So this is more of a continuation with everything that happened. Um, So it's really refreshing to see this take on iCarly, in my opinion. Um, Rico, have you seen the reboot of iCarly? Yeah, and I have seen actually seen both seasons, but like you've only seen each episode once, so I'm not entirely familiar with it. But the way I would describe it, it seems more like iCarly meets friends, if that makes sense. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, so it feels like it's definitely targeted towards, like I said, our generation or the original viewers of iCarly. They just kind of threw in some other twists there. So yeah, it doesn't really like it's like I said, you can't really compare the first iCarly with the second iCarly. I don't think one's better than the other. I think they're two completely different, but the same shows. But uh, I mean, I like it. It's uh, also better than what I initially expected of it. I honestly don't really know or didn't really know what I was expecting when watching the reboot. But I think it's nice. It's definitely a show that is um, easy to follow and all the characters are still really relatable. And especially as an adult, it is very relatable, actually. Um, And I really appreciate that about the reboot version. What made iCarly so great was the fact that it was random like it was unlike any tv show that we had seen before it involved the internet it involved random or having different segments i mean we did see the whole segment thing with the amanda show which is and i think i don't remember much of all that but i think they did have segments there as well and this kind of had like segments within the show so you had the main plot of the show And then you had the web show, which had all these segments on it, which I thought was really creative and really interesting, which is why I think this show was so popular. Um, And that was definitely one of my favorite aspects of the show. I don't know if I have a favorite segment. I think if I had to choose one, it'd be messing with Lubert, because when I was younger, that always made me laugh for some weird reason. Um, And it's still one of the things that I remember very well from the show. I don't know if you have a favorite segment, Rico. Well, I don't think you really have a favorite segment. I mean, and I think of like the actual segments on like the web show iCarly. Like the one thing that comes to mind is just because of how prevalent it is in the show is the bit where they go random dancing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the random dancing was always, it was interesting, but like, you know, when the show first premiered, I was much younger, so I would always get up and and actually dance with them. But like, as the show went on, I kept going like, okay, I'm tired of this. And like, I would get worn out from dancing so much. 
and eventually like I just lost interest in it overall but that was one of like the key points of iCarly so it wasn't like I don't know if I can describe it right but it was entertaining it's just I I was expecting it and I liked it when it came up but like after a while I'm like oh I'm getting tired of this but yeah overall um Schneider shows have definitely impacted so many people iCarly was and still is one of the greatest shows of my childhood and it was one of the many reasons why I wanted to do YouTube growing up and I related to it even more personally because it did take place in the city that I'm from Um, and I really enjoyed this show and uh, actually speaking of Seattle again I'm not sure if iCarly was the reason that this campaign was created. Maybe it was one of them. Um, But many shows um, that supposedly film here or take place here in Seattle or Washington State are not actually filmed here. iCarly was one of those shows. Um, Another show was Grey's Anatomy, which we know takes place in Seattle. But I believe it was actually filmed in Vancouver, B.C., which does have a similar climate to Seattle. Um, which is why people are easily fooled and thinking that, oh, that is Seattle, but it's actually not. Um, it's in Canada, across the border. But a lot of other TV shows are usually filmed in either Vancouver or like I Carly was in Los Angeles. And there is a campaign that started. I, I can't remember how old this campaign is. But if you're an actor or a model here in Washington state, you'll know of the hashtag film in WA, or which stands for Washington. And this is because even though so many TV shows and so many movies take place here in Seattle, they're not actually filmed here. And for the actors and models that are here in Seattle and wanting to film these shows, it's like these shows aren't actually coming here and filming those shows. They're all using local actors from either Vancouver or from Los Angeles. But they're really missing out because for the shows that are filmed here in Washington State, which are usually small, um, granted, but, you know, a lot of these small and short films or uh, motion pictures and whatnot, they do make money at the end of the day. And so this hashtag was created to um, try and keep a lot of not just the filming here in Washington State, but bring all the other shows that take place in Seattle to here. Because there is like, it doesn't seem like it, but there is actually a large market for that sort of thing here. And iCarly was one of the shows that kind of like drove this campaign or inspired this campaign. I honestly don't really know, Um, but I feel like it did contribute towards that. Because for a while I did see that hashtag with the iCarly reboot, especially since it also takes place in Seattle still. And people were like, whoa, hey, you're still filming in Los Angeles. Why don't you come up here? But yeah, I just thought that was another interesting fact. But yeah, um, that's all I really have to say about iCarly other than it was one of those very few shows that I remember almost really well as a kid because Nickelodeon would constantly play iCarly. It didn't matter when I turned on the TV. It was usually iCarly from 2007 till 2012 when it was running almost all the time I tuned in, in tuned into Nickelodeon. It was iCarly. And I remember watching the same episode several times or watching the series. Well, I didn't really watch the later seasons because, again, they premiered when I had just entered high school and I kind of lost interest in kids shows or keeping up with like Carly and the other shows. Um, But I just remember it being a very big part of my childhood to the point where I was in middle school. I was with my friends and all I did was say one quote from that show and people would know where it was from. I remember when I was with one of my good friends and I don't remember like the context of our conversation, but I was like, uh, I don't remember what episode was from either. It was definitely from one of the first episodes of the first season, but I was like, I was trying to be helpful. And then like, she quoted me the sec- or she finished the quote and was like, oh, you were being helpful. All right. Or I can't even remember the second quote, but I just remember both of us going, how did we know where that was from? We both watch iCarly. Oh my God. And it was like really great because everyone at my middle school seemed to know what iCarly was. And I think that much of an impact it had on people. It was like, I can't even compare it, but it's like, With SpongeBob, you could say quotes from there as well, and people would know where it was from. iCarly was very similar, where you could say a quote from that show, and people would most likely know where it was from. And uh, that was another aspect I enjoyed of the show. But overall, what I'm trying to say is it had a huge impact on me, and I thoroughly enjoyed watching the show full on and full through. I I just, uh, yeah, I have a lot of great positive feelings about iCarly. Yeah, uh, I mean, thinking back... uh... With with the show, like another another character that I remember thinking back is Neville. Do you remember him? 
Oh yeah, I remember Neville. Uh, like Jack Romney's mean nemesis. Uh, yes, and I was actually going to mention him. I kind of thought of the side characters. Um, and of course, Neville was one of them. And for those that haven't seen the show, Neville is Carly's worst enemy. He's a critic and he tries to constantly sabotage iCarly because he wants a kiss from Carly. And unless he gets that kiss, he's going to keep sabotaging the show. Um, and he's also one of the reasons why iCarly was so entertaining, just because he was so funny. Yeah. And I learned what Tapanaut is because of him. <laughs> yeah. 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 Neville was. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the one episode that comes to mind, I think, Neville is, I think, from the second season. It's called I Give Away a Car, where he, he deliberately sets up a car giveaway on iCarly, thinking that it's sponsored by a uh, car dealer. And when it turns out that that really wasn't the case, that it was all set up. And then, because Neville was the winner of the contest, he, he then is claiming that if iCarly does not give him a new car, he's going to get them terminated for fraud and all that. Do you remember that episode? Um, You said it was a later episode, right? Season two. It's not... Oh, season two. Still early, but not quite as early. That, again, sounds very familiar. It's like some episodes got played more often on Nickelodeon, so I'm sure I've seen it. I just don't really remember much of that episode. But yeah, Neville was definitely one of the reasons why the show was so popular as well, just because he was also very entertaining and very funny. And in addition to Neville, we also had many other reoccurring characters. I already mentioned Tebow, who joined the cast later on. Same thing with Gibby. And we also had Freddie's mom, who would constantly interrupt Freddie at the worst possible moment or like worst time, telling like nagging at him to do certain things or be a certain way. Um, and Freddie having like a really funny response to it every time or just saying like, no, I don't want to or something like that. Um, and I think that was another running gag of the show, along with we also had Lubert, of course, which is where the segment messing with Lubert uh, got created or how it came to be, I should say. And uh, there's a ton of side characters, but I, I can't remember all of them at the moment. But anyway, even the side characters are very memorable. And mm -hmm. that's another great thing about the show is that like you can follow along and see like there's a lot of storylines within this show as well. It was kind of like very complex, but even for a kid, you could still follow it. And mm -hmm. that's what I also really enjoyed about the show. Um, but yeah, I think that's, uh, that's all I have, unless you have anything else to add. Uh, not really. Well, I don't know about you all, but iCarly was definitely one of my favorite shows, as I've mentioned several times throughout this podcast, and it definitely shaped who I am as a person and thoroughly entertained me as a kid. I would actually sit down and watch the show and pay attention to it and would talk about it the next day with all my friends. and. Uh, it just had an impact on so many people. And I have to give credit to Miranda Cosgrove, the rest of the cast and Dan Schneider for making um, my childhood so amazing because of the show. Um, so thank you everybody for tuning in once again and listening to our take on iCarly and we will see you all next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to Beyond the Lens. The intro music is Work. That's W-E-R-Q by Kevin McCobb. It is available under a Creative Commons Attribution License and can be downloaded for free at Incompetech.com. Beyond the Lens is a ReCore Entertainment production. And we are clear.